Welcome to Mechanics and Materials, or as I say, welcome to Mechanics, where we got stress and strain, we got transformations to every different plane in Mechanics. Welcome to Mechanics, hope it won't bring you to your knees, 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 in Mechanics. Welcome to Mechanics, so let's begin, P -p please, please, please. All right, it's great to be here with you today. I'm so excited to take you through uh, some of the stuff we do on strain transformation and also taking you through more circle and three dimensions. So let's get started and see what we got on tap for today. We got our learning objectives. We're going to extend more circle to 3D states of stress, then define plane strain, develop the strain transformation equations, and then apply those strain transformation equations to solve some engineering problems. Finally, explain the use of strain gauges. So, you're lucky. Uh, this is the first stop on the Gauges and Rosettes World Tour. So, we've got an awesome show for you. We're going to get started. Can't wait to see you around. Alright, so to get started, we're going to talk about more circles. So, I just want you to recall what more circle was. Right? We had plain stress and we took an element that had normal forces and shear forces but all in one plane like the XY plane and we were able to draw a circle to represent all the possible states of stress. So no matter which way we rotate this block, we could find the stresses acting on that particular rotation. We could find the normal stresses on that rotation as well as the shear stresses. If you don't remember how to draw a Mohr circle, take a look right here. Hopefully we remember about Mohr circle in two dimensions and we recall that we talked about principal stresses. So principal stresses meant we could take this block we could rotate it to some angle and all we had were normal stresses on it. But we haven't yet considered what's happening in the Z direction. In general, we might have shear stresses in the Z direction and we could take this block and besides rotating it in the XY plane, we could rotate it in the XZ plane, the YZ plane, and we could find a rotation of this block in which we only have three principal stresses, so three normal stresses, a sigma, you know, one, a sigma two, and a sigma three. All right, so that's generally what we can do. However, we're gonna really kind of focus on the idea of plane stress. And so in plane stress, we can rotate to any axis, but I want you to also consider what's happening in the Z direction. If there's no information given, the stress in the Z direction is just zero. And that is in fact also a principal stress because in plain stress we're taking the shear in the z direction. There's no tau xz and no tau yz. And so therefore whatever stress we have on the z direction, that is a principal stress. Now, it doesn't matter what way we rotate this block, we still have that principal stress in the z direction. It's going to be important that we account for that sigma z or that, that third principal stress because when we start talking about failure theories, all of our failure theories are going to need us, uh, require us to account for what's happening in the z direction. Even if there's no additional uh, force in the z direction, we still have to count that principal stress as zero. Let me show you what I'm talking about uh, as we step through the notes. Like I was saying, it's very important that we consider what's happening in all three dimensions. So we're going to have three principal stresses. Sigma 1, Sigma 2, and Sigma 3. Now, it's just kind of a, a thing in uh, engineering mechanics to order these algebraically from highest to lowest. So Sigma 1 is the largest. That's greater than or equal to Sigma 2. Greater than or equal to Sigma 3. I'll just note, make the note. Algebraically. Okay, and so that means that, you know, positive 5 is higher than negative 100, okay? So, sigma 1 is highest to lowest using algebraic numbers, okay? Alright, so, uh, once we do that, I want you to just think about what's happening on this block. 
So far, we've considered just the x and y plane. So that looks like this. Sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. And so we've gone through and we are able to, for this particular block, draw more circles. So what we would do is we would come in, uh, remember we're keeping sigma on the x-axis, tau on the y-axis positive downwards, and then we come in with sigma x, tau xy, sigma y minus tau xy, We draw a straight line, we can find the center, we can draw the circle, and so forth. We can find the radius, we can find all the values, and we would say based on this circle, that right under the center here, this would be our tau max, our max shear stress. And we would also then claim that this here is sigma 1, and this here is sigma 2. Now I want you to consider what happens if we have a stress, right? These sigma 1 and 2, we can rotate this block until just those normal stresses are acting on it. But no matter what, on the surface right here into the board, uh, we have another stress possibly. And that's going to be sigma z. I'm going to show it here. Uh, it could be zero, or it could have a value. Let's say it has a value and it's now in compression on the surface. That's going to create a negative number. Now, we don't have any shear stresses, so tau xz and tau yz equals zero, but we do have a principal stress on the z surface. So I have to account for that in my Mohr circle. So sigma z just becomes a principal stress. And so we plot sigma z somewhere, and maybe uh, it happens to be right here. So this is going to be sigma z or sigma 3. OK, again, I've ordered them just sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. 1, 2, and 3 is just arbitrary. They're just the three principal stresses. Um, so there's no right or wrong. If I ask you for the principal stresses and you have them misordered, that's fine. Um, but typically in engineering mechanics, like I said, we adopt the sign kind of convention that sigma 1 is the highest algebraically down to sigma 3. OK, with that being said, what happens to our Mohr circle? Well, this blue circle I like to think of as like the interaction in the xy plane. Okay, so this circle represents all the possible rotations that we can do in the xy plane. But we could also do rotations in the xz plane, we could also do rotations in the yz plane. And so we can account for that by drawing a circle. But you see how this circle connects sigma 1 and 2? The other interactions connect sigma 1 and sigma 3, and sigma 2 and sigma 3. And so I don't really have any information. I have no shear, if I know I have no shear stress, all I have to do to extend more circle to three dimensions is draw circles between the remaining uh, principal stresses. So I'll go ahead and do that between sigma 2 and sigma 3. And finally, I can draw one between sigma 3 and sigma 1. All right, so we can think of these as other interactions. Um, but the important thing is that a block, a block of material, it doesn't really know how it's going to fail. It just knows the stresses it experiences. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to fail just in the xy plane. It could easily fail in the you know, xz plane or a yz plane or some other strange plane coming out of the board at you, rotated, all twisted. Uh, it, but it's going to fail, right? And failure is what we're really after. So um, one of the theories for failure is going to tell us that the maximum shear stress 
causes failure. So we need to identify the max shear stress that's occurring on this block. We see that in the xy plane we had a max shear stress, but when we consider this third principle stress, we actually get another larger shear stress down here at the bottom. So really, this is our maximum shear stress. And I call this tau max absolute or our absolute maximum shear stress. So when we're trying to determine failure, we want to know the absolute maximum shear stress. So even if sigma 3 or sigma z was zero, we would have plotted a point at zero and we still would have gotten a larger circle in which we would have to identify this maximum absolute shear stress uh, to check for failure. The other important aspect is that we identify all the principal stresses uh, so a second failure theory is going to require us to solve for sigma 1, 2, and sigma 3. And so we have to be able to recognize that sigma 3, even if there's no stress, sigma 3 is zero. And we have to account for that in that particular failure theory. We're going to see all of that in the next lesson. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and try using this information to solve another problem with more circles. All right, here's the example problem with more circle. I want you to give this a try, so go ahead, pause the video, give it a try, and try to uh, figure out what our third principle stress is, right? We have nothing, inf no information about it, so I think that third principle stress, sigma z, is equal to zero. So don't forget that as you're plotting uh, the three circles to make more circle in three dimensions. I hope you had some success drawing more circle for this particular case. Uh, we're gonna walk through it together and I'll make sure that you uh, see how we can draw those uh, two other circles so that we get more circle for three dimensions. So I start off uh, by drawing a sketch of my element and I also like to label what my forces are, what my stresses are. So sigma x here is nine KSI, sigma y, positive 5 KSI, tau XY, positive 4 KSI. So then I plot sigma X, tau XY, so that's going to be 9 comma 4, so 9 comma 4, go right here. I plot sigma Y minus tau XY, so that's 5 negative 4, so 5 negative 4, be this point right here. Draw a line to connect them. Find my center. This is at 5, this is at 9. My center is going to be right here at 7, 0. Draw my circle. Something like that. And now I can solve for the radius. Remember our radius is here. So I can draw the smaller triangle. It's got two and four. So I can solve for my radius. R squared equals two squared plus four squared, which is 20. So R is equal to four point four seven two. All of these things are in units of KSI, so I should probably make sure I have my axis labeled. And I'll go ahead and add KSI to the, give us some units here. Always want you to have units in your problems. All right, so that covers the first part. We can solve for the principal stresses. We see we have a principal stress here, sigma one, and a principal stress here, sigma two. So. Sigma 1 equals the center plus the radius. So that's going to be 7 plus 4.472. So that gives us 11.472 KSI. Sigma 2, center minus the radius. So that's going to be 7 minus 4.472. So that's going to be 2.528. And now I need to consider sigma 3. 
I said sigma 3, sigma z is going to be sigma 3, so we're going to consider only cases where we have a principal stress in the third direction. So in this case, nothing is here, so this becomes sigma 3. And so I'll just label sigma 3 as 0. Sigma 3 goes in right here. I now have all my principal stresses. I want to draw the more circle that connects the other two, so I'll connect sigma 2 and sigma 3 by a circle. And then I'll connect sigma 1 and sigma 3 by a circle. So that'll create a larger circle that encompasses both. And now I see that my absolute max shear stress down here at the bottom. Simply put, we can solve for tau max absolute just equals the radius of the largest circle. So, if you like to be very uh, graphical, geometric about it, just figure out what the radius of this largest circle is and you'll have tau max absolute. If you like to have a formula involved, with that, let's go ahead and figure out what that would be. Um, tau max absolute will equal the magnitude of sigma 1 minus sigma 3, which is the lowest, divided by 2. Alright, so that this, if you want to use this formula, that requires that you always label sigma 1 higher than sigma 2, higher than sigma 3. So remember, when we use this formula, this always has to be the highest stress, this always has to be the lowest stress. Alright, if that's the case, we can go through and find this now. We have sigma 1 is 11.472, minus sigma 3 is 0. Divide by 2, so we saw tau max absolute is equal to, I think it's going to give us 5 something, 5.736 KSI. Alright, so we used more circle to successfully identify the three principal stresses. Maybe we want to box our answer in. This is one of our key values that we got. And then we also were asked to find the absolute maximum shear stress. We saw that this maximum absolute occurred on the largest circle, which in this case was this black circle um, that connects sigma 1 and sigma 3. And uh, tau max absolute has a formula, if you'd like to use a formula, uh, or just find the radius of that largest circle. And that radius was 5.736 KSI. Alright, again, uh, it's important that we have sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, as well as tau max absolute, because that's ultimately going to help us define failure. Alright, we're going to move on though, we're going to talk about strain transformation. So just like stress transformation, we got strain transformation, and I'm excited to get on to that next.